a fairly quick, easy, flexibility project today. Um, inspired by my wife, uh, she has this knack of looking in magazines or on Pinterest or Etsy, finding these things that she likes and dropping subtle hints like, oh, do you like those? They're very reasonable, aren't they? I think I might get a pair of them. You know, knowing damn well that I'm not going to let her buy ironwork. So this is one of those um, situations. They are, I don't know what you call them. They're sort of, they're candle holders basically. Um, wall mounted sort of sconce things. Very simple with a heart shape on the top. Um, so let's get on and I'll show you what, what it's all about. Okay, so we'll start off with two pieces of inch quarter, 25 by six. Um, I wanted to use inch and a quarter quarter, but I hadn't got any. Um, they're 18 inches long, and as with most of my projects, it's a bit of a guess because I've having never made these before. So I've guessed at around 18 inches to start with. Now mark in the centre on one end of each. I'm doing a pair, but I'll probably just show you one. All right, so that's just marked down the centre. You can see there. Now, I'm again going to guess at round about four and a half inches that I'm going to split down. And so it's all a bit hit and miss. And I suppose a bit of experience. I've done not this, but similar things in the past. So that's how I can't find my blasted punch. Hang on a minute. Let me go and see if I can find it. Just turn the video off, I'll come back. Right, found it. Um, yeah, so it's, you know, all of these things, it's just the same sort of process, is just putting different orders to get different results. There you go, you can just see the punch marks, and that's where I'm going to cut to. Now, I'm going to cut them, you could do it with a uh, grinder or hacksaw, but I'm going to cut it with that hot set just because you know I can. It's a blacksmithing video, I might as well do it that way. And I'm going to use this bit of scrap on the anvil so that I don't uh, cut through onto the anvil and blunt my hot set or damage the anvil. Get rid of those. So let's find an appropriate hammer. I'll use that one. That's a kilo hammer, which is what about two pound something like that 2.2 .2. and we hold down all right let's see what we can do my wire brush has got some oil on it all right i'm going to start at the top end obviously that's where it's going to get coldest quickest Just mark it as I go. If it looks about right, I'll carry on. And you can see now it's pretty well cold. So I ought to uh, get it warm again, really. But you can see it's cutting in quite nicely. Just level it out. It's bowing it up a little bit. Just stick it back in and get it warm again. It doesn't take long on this fire to get warm. Right, it's not focusing very well. It seems to be focusing on all the stuff in the background. I ought to have actually set the focus on this. I can manually focus on one point. The trouble is I do it and then I forget I've set it manually. Go and try and do something else and it's focusing nowhere near where I want it. So I try not to do it too much. I've got two of these 
hot sets, one that's set this way around. And I, now you can just see, if I hold it up, there's a slight mark there right down the middle where that's just about to come through. So I'm going to turn it over and cut from the back. don't know if it's a good idea or not, but I'm going to do it anyway. Um, as I was saying, yeah, I've got one that's got the uh, blade set this way, and then the other one that's got the blade set sort of black backwards and forwards. So it's quite easy to use, you know, doing different jobs. So if I wanted to go straight away from me and towards me, I'd use the other one. And see how easily that's cut through. Any trouble is, I should have marked it on both sides, the length, because I think I've got to go a bit further up. Yeah, so there's about another half inch I need to go, which actually you can just about see. Let's see if it's hot enough still just to go that extra half inch. Yep, that'll do. I think that's cut through it now. Yep. It's not pretty. But it's effective. You know, an angle grinder with a slitting disc on, or even a hacksaw, is probably neater. But just showing you can do it with the hot set. Alright, now I'm going to split it open. Oh no, now I've split it open. I'm going to open it up so I can get to each of the, the arms to try and tidy them up because that uh, hot set does leave a little bit of a burr on the inside nothing too major but it just needs a little bit more tidying up than it would have done if it was a slitting saw Just using my shearing hammer for this. I like my shearing hammer for most of these jobs. It's uh, just about the right weight for me. And having the slightly rounded one end, it's um, quite useful. Just try to open right up into that gap so that I can tidy up right back in there. You'll notice I am doing what I always say not to and that's working this metal quite cold. Basically because it gets cold so quickly. A because it is cold today but because it's thin small bit of metal. I'm trying to make use of every available second that I've got to work on it. I don't quite know how long these are going to come out. Um, what do we start off? Four and a half, so probably five, maybe even five and a quarter, five and a half, maybe, depending on how much I draw them out. That's basically just tidied them up. Now I've got to start the drawing out. And so it doesn't take long. With them being so small. Right, now I'm going to start actually drawing them out. And again, you've got to be careful because this stuff, you can see there, it's twisting. So I'm trying to twist it back to keep it square. And if you let it twist, what you'll find will happen is it'll split. Split wide open and you're knackered then, nothing you can do. Um, yeah, if you were really determined to save it, you could probably try and fire weld it all back together, but to be honest with it, it ain't worth it. Just chuck it and start again. So the idea is to not let it get 
twisted in the first place. And then you won't have the problem. The way that was cut, we probably ended up with two bits of three eight rather than two bits of half inch, which well you probably still wouldn't have got half inch if you'd use a slitting saw, but we'd, it would have been damn near half inch. So those slitting saws are only about 0.8 of a mil wide, even if you use the one mil one. So you're only losing an absolute gnat. But with the uh, hot set you actually do lose quite a bit. It's getting a bit warm, just cool it out. So basically what I'm saying is that the arms are going to be much thinner once you cut it with the slitting uh, with the hot set rather than doing it with a slitting saw or a hacksaw. Not that it makes any difference, just that if you're going to do more than one, you've got to do them all the same. So if you do one with a hot set and then decide it's not a good idea and do the next one with a slitting saw, you're going to end up with two different thicknesses. Getting there. Alright, I'm just going to measure it and see exactly what we have got. And that's about 155mm, whatever that is in Imperial. Let me have a quick look. 155, that's actually just over 6 inches. So it's a lot longer than I expected. So I'm going to leave, probably leave that at that and try and get the other one the same. Because I think 6 inches might be almost too much. Make a massive heart on top. I don't want it to look out of proportion with it being knocked down to sort of about three eighths now. If it's too long, it might look a little bit odd, but we'll see. Time will tell. So it's all a bit hit and miss, so. I draw this one down the same as the other one. It's a very long, slender sort of taper. It's been very cold here over the last week. Well, you can see we're getting there. It's been sub zero for almost the whole week with four or five inches of snow. Now I'm just going to mark the six inches or the 155 mil on the anvil so I can test the other one up against it. Yeah and it's as I say that we've just got rid of the snow it literally almost overnight the temperature rose to just above freezing and the snow disappeared within a matter of hours. It was absolutely incredible. Alright so that's the first one that's the and actually that one's about right, so I'm going to have to call it a bit of a day there. Even though this one I don't think is quite as tapered. But I don't want to start doing anything else with the other one, so we're going to leave it at that. So we've got two 6 inch spikes. I'm just going to knock it over the edge of the anvil there, just to, over the beak, just to really round off the inside of that cut. That's all I was doing there. So now we've got to bring them back together a little bit and try and turn them into a heart. Which could be quite tricky. I'm not quite sure. What this is going to look like. I don't sort of tentatively doing the first half and sort of try and get an idea of what it's going to look like. I don't know if I want a bit of a bow in there. No, I don't 
don't think I do. It doesn't look right. No, don't really like the look of that. Let's warm her up again. So this it gets so cold so quickly. It's um pull it on a little bit more. Open it up a little bit. It's all a bit see how gently I'm ta tapping it because it's doesn't need a lot and it moves quite easily as you can see and if you do tap it too hard you're risking damaging it putting you know hammer marks and thinning it out more than you really want to so what you're trying to do here is move it rather than uh, alter it if you see what I mean move the shape rather than alter the shape no that doesn't make sense move yeah move it move the arm the bit that we've already made without altering its shape or structure no that doesn't make sense I think you know what I mean All right, let's do the other one now once we get the other one half done then we can see whether the first one is any good or not. It's not until you start to get the pair together that you realise whether your first bit is any good or not. There's a lot of fiddling and faffing. Again you've got to try and keep it up the centre so that where they join is still running up the centre of your your bar, because you could end up making a really nice heart and then look at it and suddenly find that it's actually not running up the centre of the bar. You see that one's fairly running up the centre but that first arm that I did is still rubbish so I'm going to cool it off a bit. It's getting a bit warm. Stick it back in and try again. Um, so it's not until you've got the pair of them together you really realise what you've got to do. So we've warmed the sort of almost the whole thing up. So you want to get that bow out there. I've got a little bit of a bow, so I want to straighten that out and then push that back on. Now you can see that it's gone way off centre again. It's all pissy eyed down to the right, so I've got to fiddle and faff about. As I say, you've got to be careful. This is where I, you know, you you can damage it if you're not careful with all the mucking about. So you need to control your hammer blows. I'm just looking at that, wondering what the hell I've got to do to get it right. I I can't. Sort of get it in my head what needs to be done. <laughs> you can see, almost see my brain working, trying to figure it out. I'm see, it's it's almost there. It's if you can get it, if I can get it somewhere, you can see it. it's almost there. In fact, I almost might just leave it because. I'm going to be here all night mucking about with it. And I want to get this project done. I haven't got all day. It's lots of gentle, subtle tips and taps. And I think that's going to be about it, if you can see that. I'm going to call it a day at that. I think that's pretty good. I'm just going to warm it up, flatten it out, make sure it's all as it should be. And that's it. Call it a day. Clean it off. Literally just tap it all down so it's all level. 
so that when it sits on the wall it's not going to be sort of bits sticking up here and there right there you go I'm calling it a day at that blind man would be pleased to see that and I'm sure the wife will be over the moon with it it's just when alright it's going to taper that other end out now it's just when uh, you throw an eye over it you know a couple of weeks down the line and you think Christ that's rubbish but there you go right bigger hammer this time got me bigger club hammer just give it some beans I'm going to draw this down into a a much more sharp taper we don't want it as long and thin as the original one or the first ones so we're just going to give this some beans actually you can see quite nicely how that metal shifts from that shot get it down the middle you can see that's one heat pretty much done the job I'll get uh, warm again change the hammers back to my good old faithful try and tidy it up and you can see even that hammer although it's not all that heavy you can move quite a bit of metal about with it If you do this all from one side, you'll probably find it'll you know be it won't be running up the middle. So I like to turn it over here and there. That's what I'm looking at now, just to see if it's down the middle, which it's not. Just give it an eye. And that's pretty much it for now. It's not perfect, but it's uh, pretty good for a couple of heats. So what I'm going to do now, before we bend it, this end, very end, is going to become the point that the candle sits on. It's going to go through the actual sconce. So what I want to do is cut into it and make it into a nice little point, sort of like a needle. Um, I was going to try and do it with my guillotine tool, but of course I've left it at home from when I took it home for one of my other videos. So I'm going to have to do this with a grinder or file or both. So I'm just going to cut in there about three quarters of an inch. On all four corners. Oh, of course, fat head shoulders in the way. Just going to run all the way around it. What I'm going to do is finish it off with a file. Now that's dancing about in there because it's sticking right out the out the vice. So I'm just going to move it and put it back in the vice. So it's not going to chatter. Now this is a very fine file. I ought to have found a bit of a coarser one to start with, but I can't be bothered. So I'm just going to spend a little bit of time with this real fine one just turning this into a nice little spike that you can impale a candle on I'm imagining that this will hold something like an inch and a half maybe two inch church type candle you know sort of four or five inches tall maybe don't know, but that's what I've got in my mind. So I'm just going to make sure this is sharp enough but sturdy enough just to give the candle some support. I don't like candle holders that hold 
big or tall candles not having some sort of help they're too easily to get knocked over knocked off and uh, up goes your house we're getting there I think we're just about there you can see there that's turned into quite a nice little sharp point now right I've made this little jig it's just a bit of inch and a half pipe welded to a bit of angle iron with a little bit of flat on the back I've worked out I want to heat it up between these marks and I'm going to clamp it in there with a pair of mold grips or something up there pull it round and Bob's your uncle I'm going to probably use something like that, the F tool. With any luck, it should be right. Clamp it in there. Start pulling it round. Keep it nice and tight to the jig. Of course the jig's coming out the it's all a bit pissy eyed. So we need to go and give that a tap. See it's not down the centre. So we're just gonna straighten it up. by eye and that's pretty good it ain't bad might need a little bit more just tidy up I say blind man will be pleased to see it make sure it's parallel that way so it's not sort of coming in on itself and that's about it I think for that bit We will have to drill it. So, we'll do that next. Just mark the centre again in a couple of places. And this time I've got my punch. There's no, I'm not measuring anything for any part from the centre as to where I put the the holes but obviously that one's going to go just above the the point so you can get to it once it's all assembled so those two we're going to nip over to the drill we we'll put something like uh, I don't know about 3 16th in there let's give it a drop of CT90, bit of cutting fluid. And I'm actually running that a bit fast. Let's put some more in because that is just running a little bit too fast. So I'm going to turn that down and put it on the lower speed for the next one. That's better. Might take a few seconds longer. But you're not going to burn your drill bit or overheat your metal and harden it up and get all sorts of problems with some of this mild steel these days it's got quite a bit of carbon in it so there you go that's the two mounting holes so while I'm here I'm going to make the sconce so I'm going to put my hole cutter in this is just a standard I think this one's a Bako, but you can use all sorts of different makes. I've got various different ones, Starrets and all sorts. Now I've got a bit of old plate here, it's um, 14 gauge which is about 2 mil. Now I've just noticed I've got a bit of a mark on there where someone, I've used that for cutting on. So I'm just going to go to this other end. I cut out of before. I 
These are great, these hole saws. Imagine drilling a hole that big if you wanted to actually cut a hole that big in anything. As it happens, we want the washer that comes out, but if you wanted to drill a hole in something, these are bloody superb. Again, you've got to go a bit steady with them. As long as you keep them lubricated and go steady, they work a treat. Absolutely worth their weight. Nearly there. And that's it. Done. And there it is. Drops out. Even better. Normally, that's just what I'm going to do. Is poke it out. And I didn't need to. It was already out. There we go. It's a bit warm. So I'm just going to take it around and clean the edges up because it leaves a bit of a burr when you've cut with one of these hole saws. Now I've just stuck it in the fire and now I'm going to dish it very gently with my good old chewing hammer with the, the rounded end over one of the holes in my swage block. Unfortunately my swage block is pretty ancient and a lot of the edges on the slots and holes are broke well I don't know if they're broken or damaged or whether that's how they were cast but they're not particularly even so you end up with a few rough edges but you can get the basic shape and finish the rest of it on the anvil so I'm going to the smaller hole now and just tapping it in Trying to sort the edges out. Very useful these swage blocks. I really ought to make myself a swage block stand so that I can turn it up on edge and use the, the edges much more easily. At the moment I've just got it, you can see there, nicely dished. At the moment I just got it resting on a bit of an old sleeper. Right, so we've got the two components. We've got this bit and we've got the nicely dished sconce. That's how they're going to go. So now I'm going to braise them together. It's down here. Let's see if we can get it finished. Alright, I've sort of cobbled it up in the vise, just put it there and it's just sitting there, it's just resting. Just get my um, brazing rod hot, dip it in a bit of flux, get the two bits nice and cherry red. Again I've got to be careful of that spike because it's very fragile really. two bits are nice and hot and that's it done brazing is one of those funny things it suddenly goes I'll just put my tools away and I'll just let you have a little look you can see there it goes it just ran suddenly all the way around it bash away it goes so I'm gonna clean that up and we'll have a little look That's the general idea. I think the wife's going to like that by the time it's on the wall. Obviously I'll crack on now and make the other one. But there you go. Very simple. Very quick. Well, comparatively quick. You don't need any real special knowledge. Nice little job. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.